that TTDP is arriving with fiber as close as possible, use the very last drop of meters instead of entering the home with fiber. So to do so, we should be, could be too far to, to power that piece of equipment uh, from the CO, just like we sometimes do with, with FTTC. For sure, it would be maybe inside of a building, so very far from a, from a power socket. So we need to actually reverse power this piece of active equipment. Reverse power in equipment uh, like that means that we have to put something inside of the home of the customer. It could be um, a power brick, something like we have over there in the demo. It could be something that's integrated into the CPE, which is fast will be obviously, hopefully the second option. Which means that, uh, as the, the title says, we are in an unknown territory. So we are sending power from inside the home to uh, our network, and we're doing that without not knowing what happens inside the home of the customer. So we have some regulatory issues later on. Uh, we'll see what's the state of the NC. But actually, we will need to have uh, the power suppliers will send power uh, just when they are sure that they are powering the actual equipment, so we're not burning anything. The amount of power should be limited uh, so that we are sure that we are not killing anybody or even hurting somebody. And on the other side, we have some, some kind of marketing uh, concern about what is the customer perception. We talked about that uh, in the first day, I think it was given presentation, so we need to tell the customer, okay, we're gonna throw some current, we're gonna throw some power from your house, but you have to be uh, confident that what we are getting from your apartment is a very, very small amount of power, and that this power is the power that you will normally use uh, when you are powering, let's say, a set of box or something else that's inside your house, and which is needed for the service that we are offering to you. The concept of FTTP so brings it a little bit more further, saying that uh, it is based on the idea of not drilling into the home of the customers, so we don't want to enter the home of the customers like at all. So what we do is what we call self-install. We want to be able actually to ship the power supply, the modem, everything that the customer needs to, to have this kind of technology in his own, we want to be able to ship this, to have the customer follow a little bit of instructions, maybe a video somewhere, and have the possibility to connect everything by himself uh, in his own. Which means that, of course, we have some safety concerns, like we mentioned earlier. There is something that we will talk a, a little bit more deeper later on, which regards, which is the migration scheme from what the customer had before and what the customer will have later on. So, if, of course, we don't want the customer to have a service interruption which is noticeable. And uh, to do so, what we need is that the installation of all this architecture, at least this is our opinion, and this is what is more or less going on as a common opinion, is that this installation has to be performed in two asynchronous steps. So basically, if the engineer needs to, to go at the distribution point, it should be a pro level, like in France, it could be on a pole, it could be on a, on a manual, on a shaft, or something like that. He should be able to go there, do this thing, do the installation, go away and leave the customer with the previous service still active, still active and still on. And then the customer needs to be to be able to plug his newly received equipment and the equipment that's on the distribution point should be able to do everything by himself, disconnecting the old service, activating itself, etc. etc. 